Scenario A is probably the most common and it's used essentially for performance. So you might have one or more objects in your database that have heavy read or write activity. Uh, the chances that every object in your database, every table and every index are accessed equally, are the same size, etc., very low. I mean, most of us in our databases, you know, one or ten, a handful of tables and indexes are the most important, the busiest you've already tuned those objects through indexes, through looking at your execution plans, through your queries, but you still need a performance boost. One potential option, not the first, I'm not going to say rush off to do this right away, but one additional option maybe having separate storage, maybe faster storage or uh, isolated storage that you can move those objects off onto and give them a performance boost. File groups can help you accomplish this. Another specific scenario, perhaps you have part of your database uh, as static data, uh, status tables, old archive data, etc. This data is, can be made read only. And what you really want to do is be able to separate out the administrative tasks, DBCC, check DB on an entire database where 25% of it is read only might be taking too long or you want to reduce the frequency of backups of data that is read-only. With multiple file groups and separating out the objects onto separate file groups, you can do certain administrative tasks at a per file group level to help you out with that. And one of the great features of using file groups is especially helpful um, when you have very large databases Usually we see a performance benefit to this at over a terabyte. You have SQL Server Enterprise Edition. And you need to restore your database. Maybe you're in a situation where you are given an hour to restore your database in the case of a disaster. But with the current size of your database and the hardware you're on, it takes two hours. Enterprise Edition and multiple file groups gives you the piecemeal restore option. And this is a really neat, really cool thing where you bring your database online piece by piece. I'll be demoing that at the end of the session today. So those are just three uses of file groups. As you can see, there's a lot of reasons to use them in SQL Server. So let's get into the good part, which is the how. Let's go ahead and look at demos in SQL Server. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to SQL Server Management Studio. I'm using SQL Server 2012 today for my demos, but you will be able to uh, use this on 2012, 2008, R2, 2008, and even 2005. The functionality has not changed much in those versions. First thing we're going to talk about is just creating a database with multiple file groups. So this can be kind of a boring, dry subject if I was to tell you. File group A contains table 1. File group B contains table 7. So I thought, what would I have done in my life that would help me organ that I could use a database to help me organize? Ever since I was a kid, okay, I've never really grown up. I'm kind of still a kid. Uh, I've had Lego pieces. I love Lego. I also happen to be just a tad on the organized side, um, and I would always go ahead and organize my Lego pieces into buckets by color, usually red, white, green, gray, black, the big green pieces that you built on had their own special bucket along with all the little wheels and the little guys. Um, so if I was going to create a database to hold my Lego collection, I would make sure that I had file groups for different sizes. So I want to keep my large Legos, my medium, and my small in different buckets. And then within that, I want to separate it out by color. In my world, this is an effective way to manage my Lego collection. So I'm going to set up a database called Organize My Lego. I'm going to be creating file groups, large, medium, and small, and I'm going to be adding tables for individual 
Lego colors to it. Let's see how to go ahead and do that. I'm going to be creating a database called Organize My Lego, just issuing a standard create database statement. But you'll notice I, and this is my first MDF file, you'll notice I also have this additional statement here, file group large Lego. That's how you add additional file groups in your initial create database statement. I'm going to be creating a physical file on it called Orange Lego MDF and then my log. Let's go ahead and take a look at the physical location of my SQL Server files. I want to show you that large Lego is indeed a logical construct and not a physical construct. So if I bring over my SQL Server directory, you'll see that I have blank slate MDF, blank slate LDF, and orange Lego. You'll notice that there is nothing that says large Lego. Again, it's a logical construct, not another physical object on your disk. So now I have one file on my file group, orange Lego, but what if I wanted to add a second file for a different color, my large white Lego? That's easy enough. I can issue an alter database command, say add file, and specify the name, the physical name, and say what file group I want to add it to. Again, we'll go ahead and we'll check the physical data directory and we'll see once again we have a new physical file, white lego.mdf, but there is no large lego list here. Again, just simply a logical construct in the database. If I need to add an additional file group to my database. Can I do that at any time? Yes. That's a simple alter database add file group command. I'm going to add in one for my medium Lego. That completes successfully and we'll see if we look at the data directory again. No reference to medium Lego here. Just a logical construct. Adding a file group, uh, adding a file to the medium Lego file group same thing I did for the large file group. Simply say add a file, specify the file name, 